Hey guys, so I'm back, I'm here at the shop and working on some stuff. Um, and so I'm, I'm starting this handheld on the phone, so it might be a little shaky and I, I will probably end up finishing this video up at home, you know, with camera, so that'll be good. But anyway, um, some things that I've been thinking about and some things that have come up and I figured, you know what, we'll just, we'll just instead of having onesies and twosies conversations, we'll just do a video on it. So, Custom stuff, custom work, um, which is, you know, what the channel started as, of course, long ago was, and I talk about this often, was me um, looking for some, watching some really uh, talented, amazing people do some customizing work to their knives and wanting to try it while I was deployed. Looking for a way to keep out of trouble when I wasn't actively militarying while it was deployed. Um, and that could be a challenge, believe me. There's lots of ways to just get bored and get yourself into some kind of stupid trouble when you're downrange. So anyway, that's, um, I've done a lot of custom work for a lot of custom people. And of course here at the shop, that's what we do probably 90% of the day. Um, at Switching though, we're doing a lot more production type work for different companies, but that's again, neither here nor there. What I'm working on right now, I'm working on uh, doing a custom dip on an AR upper lower, and then I will, I've already got the other pieces coated, and so this is the base coat. Having worked with a lot of people, and I love it, uh, but you know, I, I keep hearing from people, you don't do custom stuff much anymore. Why don't you do a lot of custom stuff? And there's a couple of reasons why. Um, number one is, uh, I, you know, I, I have, my health is not great. Um, and long time viewers know that I've got you know, um, um, rated by the VA. Uh, I'm probably about to be, I, I'm actually, so this is weird. My, my individual disabilities add up to 125% by the VA, by, by the numbers. But that's not what you get paid for. That's not like when, when, you know, that's not when somebody says I'm 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100%. That's, they do this weird math. But, uh, if you add up each individual thing, I am technically 125% <laughs> disabled better in various ways. Um, I'm about to be at the paid level of 100% because of this burn pit stuff in my lungs and my airways. So it's, it's hard for me to, to do all the stuff I used to do. Um, <coughs> second, it's time. It's just time. Um, but third is it is from, from a creative point of view, it's 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 a little bit, and I, I, I say this with a grain of salt because I don't mean it to come off in a bad way at all, in a negative way, but it's exhausting to do custom work. Um, because when I'm working on something for somebody, I need to produce a perfect piece to hand over all the time. Uh, if I'm doing something for myself, I can accept a little bit of flaw or something like that, but um, like, you know, whether I'm doing it myself here at the shop, whatever, uh, I'll do a project sometimes two, three, four times to make sure I'm handing over the most perfect piece I can. Um, and I, that's not just me. That's, I mean, that's, uh, that's I, anybody, well, I can't say anybody, because there are some people out there that we fix their crap a lot. But most, the vast majority of people, if you ask somebody to do some custom work for you, the artistry and the creativity and, and just, they're gonna put their all into it. And they're gonna wanna give you a perfect piece. Um, so, you know, with that in mind, I, I thought I'd, I'd put together a little video for things you could keep in mind when you are, when you are talking to somebody, professional, hobbyist, whoever it is, when you're asking for, for some custom work to be done. Things that could make your piece come out better and things that could make that creative type's life a little bit easier. Um, not only for themselves, but easier to produce the piece that you want, right? So ultimately, this is all for you. This helps you. All right, here I am at home, like I said, gonna do. <laughs> um, better lighting, better sound. So what I didn't touch on at all in the earlier part of this video was the whole point, which is to talk about some things that you might keep in mind and consider when talking to someone about getting some custom work done, things to keep in mind when getting some custom work done and listen you know i primarily do knives and now i branched off into the firearms world 
working at the shop, but you can, oh wow, there's an aggressive cat jumping down. But you know, this kind of can apply towards anything, any anything, anytime you're getting stuff done. So let's just jump right in, okay? So number one, really think about what you want to do and why you want to do it before you even before you even like jump into looking for somebody you know like i i have seen so many people that just they want to do they want something custom they just want to have something original or custom that they don't even really walk through the process in their head of of what it is that they're looking for and this is something that we see all the time at the shop um somebody has gotten a limited edition that or a special edition XYZ or somebody else has gotten something we, we and we see this a lot um, their buddy their relative has gotten something done by us or by someone else and they're like hey I want something done too and then we walk them start walking them down that path well what do you want done well I have I have I have a, a, a handgun and I you know and I, I just I want it customized Okay, well, what do you want to do? Well, I'm not sure, but I know I want to customize. I'm like, well, dude. Okay. <laughs> well, well, what are you what are you looking for? Well, I don't know, but my brother-in-law has a custom thing, and I want one too. Like, it's not a good starting point. Not a good starting point. Um, I like to I like to use the whole tattoo analogy, and, and you know, I have a few, and I know some people have a few. If you're walking into a tattoo shop, and you're just like. My friend has a tattoo and I want a tattoo. I think I think you're I think you're going down the wrong path there because that's something that's forever. You know, uh, I won't I, I will never get another tattoo unless it has a meaning behind it, unless I know exactly what design I'm getting, um, unless I've really thought about it. I know why I'm getting it. I know how it's going to be. Um, and I think that when you're getting a customized anything, you should kind of have the same thought process because um, remember, at the end of the day. You're gonna be, you're gonna have this thing, and you know when you buy a knife, a a just any knife, any any gun, any a car, you know anything. There's some resale value in that usually. When you have a piece customized, there's a it, it is a crapshoot, and I'm gonna tell you what, it's not even 50-50. It's usually less that that resale value goes up. Because think about it, a lot of times, you know, you, people get in their heads, oh, well, I can resell it and it'll be more expensive because now it's customized. But, but just because you like the customization that's done doesn't mean anybody else is going to like it. And when you take something that is valuable because it is desirable on the market and you alter it, there's no guarantee that the desirability and the value is still there. Um, and in fact, very often, I've seen things like hinderer knives, for example, that have been altered um, in ways that they cannot be set back to factory, now worth less because people want that original hinderer item. And what you have done to it, what I, you know, or what I've done to it for you might be awesome. You and I might think it looks great, but guess what? You put it on the secondary market and people are like, well, that's awesome, but that's not what I, that's not mine, it's yours. Um, so, you know, you very well might be stuck with this customized piece for the rest of your life or until you decide to throw it out. So you got to really think ahead. Why are you doing this? What do you want it to be? And is it something that you are, I mean, are you willing to accept the, the reduction in value? Like, I mean, if you're, if you're a collector, where are you going with it? So that's number one, things you got to think about before you even walk into this. Okay. And the second thing is, and it's kind of it's kind of it's it's wrapped right up in this right in what we just talked about what do you want done what do you want and the thing that drives me crazy total pet peeve and please understand before i say this i recognize that when people walk up and and or contact me and they say oh do whatever you want i trust you you know or do whatever you want i like your stuff i get it that is so that is a sign of respect and trust and like it's 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 a real honor to be told that but i hate hearing that because that gives me absolutely nowhere to go it gives me no direction um, and there's probably some creative types that love that because they're like yeah i can do whatever i want but if i'm if you come to me and you say i have this piece and i want it customized and i you know and you say just do whatever you want it's number one the first thing that flashes in my mind is don't you put that evil on me ricky bobby 
I don't know. I don't know you. I mean, most of the time, honestly, I have one or two very brief conversations with somebody um, before I start working on their stuff. And again, you are the one that's that's stuck with this piece when it's done. Um, and I, it, most people, <laughs> I'll be this is the honest truth. Most people are way too polite after somebody spends time, sweat, tears. Um, and sometimes literally blood, you know, customizing a piece to say, oh, I don't like it, especially if they've said, oh, do whatever you want. Um, and that's not what I want. I don't want you to be, I don't want you to have a piece that you are not 100% thrilled with. Um, now, that's different than saying, well, you know, I want, I want, I want it to be like this and I give you a little bit of leeway to work on the design. Totally different. But when you give, when you give your, your, creative type person, your, your, I hate to use the word artist, um, your customizer, zero direction and say, oh, just do whatever you want. Some people, like I said, some people might love that. Um, I, I can speak for me. I, I can speak for Darren. Uh, at least we, that is, that is just the, that's, that's number one. It's a whole lot of pressure. It's frustrating because we have no direction to go with. Um, I recommend highly recommend that you that you spend some time figuring out at least at least like you might not you might not have the exact end uh, like some people do walk in with a picture with with a literal picture and say i want this awesome that's great um but even if you can't do that come up with an idea with a theme with a reference so that we have a direction to go in and and then we can work with you and we'll say like hey i've got this is this, is this what you're looking for? No? Okay, let me revamp it. Um, hey, I've got this. Is this closer, farther away, hot, cold? Where are we going? Um, because you get better results. Um, and and I, have done, I have done the ones where people are like, hey, I, I do whatever you want. And I'll be honest, a lot of times when somebody says do whatever you want, I'll take a month of doing nothing because it's just, it's so much in my head. I have a lot of ideas, but... I start playing this out. No, nah, they might not like that. No, nah, they may not like that. What if they don't like this? What if what if this sucks? Um, so, you know, come with an idea. It like I like again. If you if you know exactly what you want, don't be afraid to say I want exactly this. Now we'll talk about the next step about what what if your idea is just not quite possible. But you know, don't be afraid to say I want this. This is exactly what I want. I want it to end up like this. Um, and if you don't have that exact blueprint, then come with sort of a little bit of a roadmap. I want to go this direction, um, and I'm not quite sure where we end up, but this is sort of what I want it to be like. Everybody has a better experience that way, and you are more likely to get a custom item that you are proud of and that you're thrilled to have, um, and that is really valuable to you in the end, and that you know, you're know you really happy with. Now, what if you come up with an idea that you know is just it, and it happens all the time once the creative juices start flowing and you're like i want this is I want this and this and this and then this detail and this detail there's lots of times at the shop where somebody says they want this much and we have to then we you know it's our job to walk them down the the path of from from what is desired to what is possible hi Peta, are you gonna are you gonna join us you just gonna sit? You just sit right here, because while it is my job, the creative person's job, to provide you as as very much close to what you want, sometimes things are not entirely possible. So you do have to approach it with a slightly open mind, okay? And understand that when when you show up with a 100% solution in your mind of this is exactly what I want you might not always be able to get that. Like for example, um, when we're doing some Cerakote patterns on things, um, you can't always get that my that finest, most minute piece of detail with Cerakote, even with stencils, you can only get so fine. Um, or there are some kinds of, of things that are just, they're not practical from any price point at all. Um, and, and we just can't do it. Um, but we will, we will give you all the options that are as very much close to it as, as we can. There are some things that physically nobody can do. Um, like for example, we have a gentleman that wants, he, he had a, a picture of 
Saddam Hussein's gold-plated AK-47, and he wanted to do that in Cerakote. And you cannot, there, there's not a Cerakote, there's no mix of Cerakotes that will get you that finish. It just is impossible. Um, but what we did was we walked him through several other options. Now, he really wanted Cerakote for what Cerakote offers in terms of protection. He wanted it on a Glock, by the way. Um, so I sat down and I said, well, you know, I can, I can give you some, I can mix up some different Cerakote combinations that will be glossy, that will be gold in color, and maybe even, you know, by mixing a couple colors, um, will give you a, a brighter, flashier gold color than the standard Cerakote gold. gold Cerakote doesn't make a lot of gold colors, by the way. But we are never, there with Cerakote, there's no way we're going to give you a replication of a gold plated finish it's just not it's just not a possibility but will work to give you the closest thing and through working with him and showing him you know what we could do we came up with something that was um possible for us to produce and and something that made him happy um it wasn't the exact what he came in the shop looking for but he ended up with again something totally unique, something totally custom, and something that was within the realm of possibility. And, um, and uh, well, I would never pay that much for, for that kind of work, but something that was within his, that he thought was um, value-wise was worth it. So, you know, keep that open mind and, and work with that person as they suggest. Um, and, I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there are some creative types that do that do upcharge and try to try to do that. But I don't know a lot, honestly. I don't know a lot because they find themselves screwing themselves out of work that way a lot because because word does get around. And that leads me to the next point. Don't be afraid to ask specifically what you're paying for. Uh, and and a you know a good business person shouldn't be afraid to tell you. When I do custom work, I, I'm I'm very upfront telling people exactly what the expenses are. Look at that kitty right there. Um, I tell them you're paying this much for the materials, this is for the work, uh, you know, for the actual work being done, and, and that's that. Um, you'll find there's a very wide range um, of, of what people charge for different things. Um, some are very high into the spectrum, some are very low. I'd be wary of either either side of that spectrum. And I, I get it, how do you know? You gotta look around a little bit. Um, you have every right to know what you're paying for and what it's going to. Um, I, I personally think, this is just me, um, people should not be making a profit on the materials that it goes into. Like, so when I do, when I do an, an I, like, uh, this is mine. This is not a, a customer thing, but this is this is my own custom rat one that I made for myself and I carry around. Um, but if I'm doing something like this for the customer, they are what material wise, they're going to pay for the scales. I got to buy the G10 slabs to do the scales. They're going to pay the exact material cost. And if they want to see where I'm getting it from so that they can see the cost, I'm going to show it to them. I'm going to give them the reference. You're paying for this. And then they're going to pay for the, the labor, the cost of the, you know, my amount of doing the work. This is, has an acid wash blade. Some some folks will I mean will be very business savvy and will you know they have invested in a gallon of ferric chloride, which is the you know a common acid for doing acid wash, and then they will figure out project by project the exact amount of acid that you're using and they'll and they'll do that math and they'll say all right so you're you're paying for the slab of G10 you're paying for X amount of ounces of ferric chloride that I'm using and you know stuff like that. Um, I don't do stuff like that personally because I'm not that business savvy uh, and I should be, but I'm not. Um, I, sh I need to be more professional, but, um, you know, I just, uh, there are certain things where I just include them in, as like, you know, I, listen, I'm going to use it myself too for stuff like this. So I just, I'll buy that kind of stuff when I need to. Um, but that's that's not that's not an endorsement of me over anybody else. I'm just trying to explain to you the difference in, in how other how some people work. There are a lot of people out there who don't charge those kinds of things, and there are a lot of people out there who do itemize every little tiny thing they do. Um, <clears throat> I have access to some resources at the shop that a lot of people have to 
uh, pay for on their own. So, you know, I don't, I don't charge for a lot of that stuff because I'm just lucky that way. Um, but anyway, you should feel comfortable. Sorry, this is where it all, this is how it all wraps back up. You should feel very comfortable asking, what am I, what am I paying you for? I, you know, when they give you a price, what am I getting line by line for this money? And if they don't want to tell you, or if they're like, well, you know, that you're getting your project for that, but they don't want to item like, eh, that's, that's a little weird. You have every right to know exactly what you're paying for. Um, and like anything else, you should feel free to shop around. You know, you're, you're not just, you're buying two things when you, when you do customizing, you're buying the product and you're, you're buying a service. So you're, you're investing in the item and you're investing in the person. Um, so like with any other purchase, you should, you should feel okay with doing so little, a little comparison shopping almost, um, and looking around. Now, again, like I said, there's a reason why, why it might be more money to go with person A than person B. Somebody might have more skill and more experience and flat out produce better work, but you know, that's something you gotta kind of look at. And this leads us into another thing. Take a look at what the person, business, service has produced before. You'd be surprised how many people don't do this. I, I swear. So at the shop at, at Patriot, um, we see, and I think I touched on this before, we have a lot of people bring in stuff um, that has been done wrong, especially Cerakote. A lot of people think that you can just get, get an airbrush and buy some Cerakote and stick it in your oven in the kitchen and it's done. And it's, I, I'm not even gonna get into it. it it's not that simple. Um, a lot of people's buddies say, ah, oh, I, I do Cerakote in my garage all the time. I'll do it for you. Give me, give me 20 bucks and I'll do it. And we see the, the utter clown show results of that and people have to bring it to us to fix. Um, so, you know, I think anybody that has any kind of professional, semi-professional experience doing stuff probably has some kind of presence online where they can show you or at least a gallery somewhere, or pictures or something where they can show you previous work that they've done. Um, so you can get a sense of they know what they're doing, they produce good work, or they don't. Um, so you should, again, if, if they can't direct you to, to some stuff they've done, you should feel free to ask. Like, like, well, can you show me some pieces that you've worked on? Um, and, you know, like, so I, you know, using myself again as an example, I used to have a Facebook page, so it all got hacked, but whatever. But I, you know, I have YouTube videos, I have an Instagram page, you know, so if anybody, and I have pictures, if anybody wants to see something specific, sure, I'll be happy to show you stuff. The shop, not very good at social media right now, but we have a, we have a website, we have a very small YouTube channel, I'm, I'm working on it, you know, I'm gonna get that better. We have Instagram, you know, but we have, and, and, and there's a, a Cerakoting Facebook group where we share stuff on the Cerakote, website they have a gallery from from certified actual trained seracoders can that are in their list can upload pictures you know so absolutely take the time to see if they've got if they've produced stuff and i should have said this before not just stuff but stuff in the neighborhood of what you're looking for this next one is a big one for me other people might feel that way i think it's it's a little it's a little um a little not cool to ask somebody to counterfeit or copy something that's el something else that's out there. Um, you know, I I don't look at knives as just tools, as as just sharp things, or or, or you know whatever it happens to be. I look at individual knives as as pieces of art, especially when you're customizing them and making them unique. And uh, to ask somebody to copy and produce a, a work that someone else has made, um, I, I find that mm, like counterfeiting. Now, to say, hey, I saw this one knife and I, I really liked it, can you make me something like it? Totally different story, that's cool. Um, but I have had somebody say, uh, you know, here, here's a, here's, you know, a, a so-and-so custom, can you make me that? You know, can you, can you give me one that, that can you turn this stock knife into that? And like, that's just, you know, that's, that's not okay. Or can you replicate this kind of work? Um, and number one, I, I'm not even 
capable of doing that. Like I could never, like I could never grind a blade like Rick Hinderer could grind a blade. Now, like I don't even have that skill in me. Uh, number one, um, but number two, like even if I could, I wouldn't. I wouldn't produce that. Like I couldn't. I think it's. I think it's wrong to even ask that. Um, that's my opinion. Uh, there are plenty of people out there that would do that. I'm sure. Um, but I just. I don't think it's cool. Next little tip. Be very clear with your communication of what your expectations are. <clears throat> Especially uh, when do you like if if you if you have like I I want this done and I'm going to a wedding on this date and I want to take it with me, uh, and that's a very specific example um, because I had somebody um, and this was uh, a knife. This was a few years ago, and the thing they said they were like, well, it would be great if it could be done around this time. And I was like, okay, sure, I'll do my best. But that was different because around that time, it wasn't quite done. And then they started emailing me saying, well, is it done? And I said, well, almost. And they were like, but you said it would be done now. And I was like, well, that's not what we said. And then they were like, well, I have a wedding and I need to bring it with me. And I was like, well, that's... And then we started talking, and and but that's not what was communicated, um, and you know so. Number one, understand the difference between someone who does things professionally full time, and their time commitment to working on stuff, and understand somebody that does it in addition to other things, and again, be very clear with your expectations, and. If if you're if the person you're working with, if the the creator, is not clear enough to you with their expectations of time frames or or things like that, ask. Make sure you get that information. Um, now, when working on a a custom project, um, I like to give a a a a window of when I think it'll be done because you know what you never know what can go wrong. Things can go wrong, you, I, and I've had tools break, I've had material break, and I had to order new ones. I've had things just, I screw up. It had, pfft, shocker, it happens. Um, <coughs> you know, something that I've done a hundred times before. Uh, you know, grinding out the shape of a scale. Uh, for example, a Contigo, and a Benchmade 810. I can't tell you how many times I've worked on Benchmade 810s, and I could almost cut that shape out of my sleep. But when you know you get a little complacent because you've done it a hundred times before, and before you know it, you realize you've you've ground out too deep um, a part of it. Now it doesn't fit anymore. You're like, shit, I got to start all over again. You know, or just a, like I said, just a flat out accident. Now you got to start all over. Things do happen. So I, you know, it's it, if there's a final drop dead date, make that known. But also, like I like to communicate. You know what? It will be done no earlier than this, but no later than this. Um, and give myself a window in there of when they can expect it. Um, if there's, if it's, you know, something where it's going to be passed back and forth in the mail, work out then. It's going to be, you know, what are your, what are your expectations of shipping? Um, and some people want it. If you're expecting it to be sent by express overnight mail with you know this amount of insurance and with this kind of tracking info and everything work that out make sure that is known up front because if you're making an assumption but the person that is in possession of your your knife gun whatever it is is working on it <clears throat> and that's not the way they normally operate guess what it's probably not going to go down that way they're going to say hey i shipped it back you're thinking okay good it's going to be here in a day because you know but they sent it first class and you know first class package and now you're freaking out because it's the next day and it's not there and they think everything's fine um, but so i mean anything can happen so communication is the key of letting every, you know letting them know what your expectations are and and getting from them what their expectations of the whole thing are and uh, a good lesson i learned in the military is most problems are, are you know in the you know between two people are actually not problems they're miscommunications they're the result of poor communications and and um, you know the quickest easiest fix for most interpersonal problems is actually just reestablishing a communication and getting the right information between them and here's another another thing that I cannot stress 
enough. Never send somebody cash. Always, always, always use a form of payment that can be tracked, <laughs> that can be monitored, and that offers you like some kind of protection plan. Um, not everybody out there is a good person. Um, you know, not everybody is going to be honest. And there are times where, yeah, I have, I mean, things get lost in the mail. Um, <clears throat> things slip through the cracks or whatever. And uh, you never know what could happen. Mistakes do happen. Bad things happen. And refunds need to be sent. Um, like I said, miscommunications. But if you're dealing with somebody and there are scammers out there, you want to be able to reach out to however you paid and say, I paid this to a non-legitimate business person and I need to file for a refund. I need my money back. Um, and you know, if you send somebody cash, if they're like, if they insist, I want a money order, or I want cash and that's all I will accept, I would not do business with them. I, I wouldn't um, be, and, and you know what? And I'm not saying that anybody who says that is not legit. There are probably, there are people out there, I know people that refuse to use a debit card because that's just the way they are. They will work with cash only, even in the real world. I don't agree with that, but that's their choice. Um, however, when you're doing business, especially when you're sending expensive items back and forth through the mail, even when you're spending a rat one, a $20 knife, $30 knife back and forth through the mail, listen, to some people, a $30 knife is, is what they can afford and that's it and they can't afford to lose that. Um, and then on top of that, you're, you're paying money to have stuff done. Some people make you pay up front, uh, you know. Don't set yourself up. Make sure that your payment is not something that could just be absconded with. Um, make sure that you are giving yourself a safety net. Um, so I, I always, I you know, people offer sometimes. They're like, oh, I can send you cash. And I'm like, please do not. Because that cash could disappear in the mail too. Like that envelope of cash could disappear in the mail. Um, who knows? And then... You know, the sender, if, if it's not, if they don't send it, you know, with some kind of tracking, that could, you know, who knows what, they could think that you took it, that it got to the, 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 the creative, you know, customizer, and they just took the cash, and is now saying it never got there, but it never actually did, you know, it's just, it's a bad situation. Don't do cash, don't do money orders. A check, at least you know if it's been cashed or not, um, but I would always try to do some kind of uh, electronic, um, payment or you know with a, a check I guess you could you could do a, a chargeback or something but always always pay with a way that you can you know file for something if you need to and if not like I said if somebody is insisting that they will only take a non traceable non refundable kind of payment that should that should be a red flag that really should be a red flag and you know finally when you when you do get your your piece back from from whoever it is give them feedback whether it's positive or negative if you are not happy with it don't tell them you're happy um there's no reason to they don't they don't you don't owe them anything um and i know some people are nice if you really love it and you're thrilled with them great tell them you're thrilled with it and happy if they have you know like a, a thing where you can leave a review do it um but if there's anything wrong if there's anything let them know and give them a chance to make it right because most most people that do this custom stuff will want to do again like i said in the very beginning they'll want to give you 100 percent exactly what you want um but let them know if there's any in any way they let you down if anything that you if, that, that you see is not what you were prepared for if if it's not what was discussed um you know that's very important to to like I said, most people that are out there doing custom type work, um, the customer satisfaction is huge. There's, there's, there's rarely, there's so little things that compare to having put your hard work into a piece and seeing a happy customer with it later and hearing them say, I love it. Um, that is a huge feeling. And to be given the opportunity to make it right if they're not is, is just as big. So, you know, make sure that you're letting them know and be specific. Hey, I, you know, this is, I'd like this to be a little bit different. Now, again, be prepared for them to say, listen, this is, you know, you wanted this to be X and it is Y because there might be a very legitimate reason why it's not 
it's 99.9% what you wanted and not that 100. Okay, so there it is. But at least it gives them an opportunity, if they haven't already, to explain to you this is why it had to be this way. And then you can enjoy the piece, what it is, and understand that this one little thing had to change because of logistics or supplies or just the mechanics of whatever went on. And you know, you don't feel like they just sort of did it this way for the hell of it or whatever. But um, you know, closing that loop with the, with with giving them feedback and and um, you know, getting any kind of leftover answers is is important for everybody. But anyway, uh, you know, I, I, doing a custom project is is a really kind of personal interaction between the owner of the object and the customizer, and um, I've built real good friendships with people. Um, just, you know, from from communicating with them and working with them at the shop, there are folks that have come in time and time again who, you know, it's not like we, we go out and have a beer with them and hang out with them, but we, we know them and we talk to them when they come in, like we get to know about them and their family and, and stuff, and it's really cool. And it's great to get to know somebody and their personality um, and it's it's great from from this side of the table to to know that you're doing stuff specifically you're making individual items that for people that they will cherish because no one else has one um, and it's 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 pretty awesome and you know because I make customized stuff for myself I also know how cool it is to have you know something that I know no one else has so if you have the opportunity if you're thinking about you know, I, I want to get in on this. I want to have somebody do something custom for me. Yeah, I highly recommend you look into it and do it. No matter who you work with, no matter what the project is, yeah, think about it. But I hope that this video has given you some things to think about um, and, and maybe given you some ideas of things to keep in mind as you go through the process. It's very easy for this process to go off the rails, and I've, I've seen it many times. Um, you know, and again, a lot of it goes down to lack of understanding and miscommunication. And if you can rein those two things in, um, it, it can be a really great experience. And you know, you can end up really, really happy. It, unfortunately, it doesn't take a lot for a great deal to go bad, and then it can put a bad taste in your mouth forever. And you know, um, you might miss out on some really cool opportunities. So I hope that this was a little informative and maybe shed some light on some things that um, maybe you hadn't otherwise thought of. Um, maybe answered some of the questions that have been out there. I mean, I, I get these, like I said, I get these these questions in onesies and twosies here and there. I thought it might be good. I'll just put a video out and, you know, instead of having these little conversations and tidbits, just put the information out there from my point of view, from what I've experienced and hopefully it helps somebody. So. Anyway, guys, uh, thank you so much for um, bearing with all this babbling. And remember that you guys are all absolutely awesome. And I appreciate every single one of you. And I'll be back again real soon.